Yeah. All right. My name's Craig. I'm from the membership desk and the maintenance collective. In my spare time, I play in joyrides and tweet about buses. I'm going to pick out three bangers and um, tell you why I like them. First off, I think we'll go to... Oh, the Mississippi Records bit is good. I think my first one out of this would be this one here. It's really good. I was listening to it here a couple of weeks ago, but then I brought some indie instead. I brought Bonnie Prince Billy. <laughs> cool artwork. Yeah. This is a good one, isn't it? This is the one that we were listening to the yeah. other week, isn't it? Yeah. It's good. There you go, see, 10 out of 10. This is my next choice. <coughs> Sorry, I've got a cough. Another Soul Culture 1, 2 and 3 on tape by your boy, Ben Perkins. I first heard about DIY Space for London, or one of the first times I heard about DIY Space for London was actually listening to these tapes. Before I even met Ben, and now he's a good buddy of mine, he's gonna borrow my Game Boy. Again, nice, nice artwork. And on this tape, I've got bangers like The Flex, Lowest Form, Priests, who played here on the opening night, Lost Rejection, R.I.P., fucking brilliant bands. Flowers, I think someone's picked this out before though, haven't they, on this thing? Yeah, yeah, so fuck that, right, that's no good. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is my next choice. This is absolutely brilliant. Really, really good fun. Terrific record, terrific band. Do you want to give me the money to buy it? So today we're going to look at some of the uh, more, more uh, unusual aspects of the Tone Record Collection. I want you to look at this. This is the folk selection, it's just seven inches. Blues, country, and world. Pay t p t particular attention to the world. Right, let's see. Oh, look, it's French. Scandale dans la famille. French. Michel, Michel Fugain. French. Guy Mardel. French. Yves Montan. French. Que claquant les galoches. So this is actually Tyrolean dance music in French. I'm with Karen. Hi. It's true. You had a good evening? Yeah, it's been lovely. Here they are. The first one is, is White Stripes, uh, name of the record I've never really been able to say. De Stil. De Stigil, I probably said once, but that was wrong. The first ever gig I went to was by the White Stripes when I was 15 or something. I got a really good spot right in the front. I was like, I've got a really good sight line. And then as soon as they started off with something, I can't even remember what it was, pretty loud. And everyone just moved around and went crazy. And I was, my, spot was, my spot was lost, but I had a nice time. So I really like this album. Secondly, it's Destiny's Child, Bugaboo, which uh, I think when I was like 12, I really liked Destiny's Child, and, uh, and I still like them a lot. Uh, when I went to university, I was trying to finish my, uh, my dissertation, and I had to stay up for about two days, so I needed something really like, energetic and also really inspiring. So I just listened to like, Destiny's Child on the loop for about, for about 48 hours. It was, it, was quite, uh, it was quite intense, but it was, it was almost like a... You know, after after that, I felt very spiritually connected to uh, to all of Destiny's Child. The third is Joanna Newsom, Have One On Me. Ease was like probably my, my favorite ever record. It took a while before this came out and it was kind of like, is it going to be good? So I think there's a worry that it would be a letdown. Everything about it is like so over the, you know, so incredibly intricate and like massive, like so many, so many, uh, so many songs on there and all like really long and intricate and even like the, the cover of it is so like, complex but it's all like this amazing vision of Joanna Newsom and it's like so when I heard it I was like oh yeah it's, it's gonna be all right and that's 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 all three of them Charles La Mer Trenet French uh this is this maybe this is something else look we can't see from the cover let's have a look closely at it <gasps> it's not French once I had a sweetheart arranged by Bert Jansch French this has is promising. It's got the word Africa in it, but the word Africa is actually African in French. Uh, Luigi, an Italian name. Song titles French. Adamo sounds like he looks German or maybe Polish. French. Michel Depeche, he goes fishing. French. Fred Bon Gusto tastes well. French. Louis Tebol, French. Gigola Cinchetti, again sounds Italian. Mon Dieu, comme je t'aime. Oh my god, how much I love you in French. But si tu reviens, if you come back in French, French, French. That's pretty much it. But before we leave the section in the library spoken word weird stuff, first thing, Spanish. Whew. Second thing, English and German. So this is actually more world, really. Maybe maybe uh, Kevin needs to rearrange. All right. What? What? Huh? Yes. Check. Check. Good. One, two, three, four. Five, six, right. And now we're Ronald, hello. 
What's good? What are you going to buy? Or recommend, at least. It's probably the first time I've seen this in physical form is Gigi Allen. Now, before anyone judges me on the Gigi Allen thing, I know he's a scumbag and a terrible person, but I was 15, so I didn't care. The reason I like this record the most is because it has the first song I ever heard by Gigi, which is Bite It, You Scum. For those of you who like skateboarding, you know that in the video Chomp on This from like maybe early 2000, Eric Costin or Frosten skated to this song. And that was the first time I heard it. It was a great part and obviously it's a great fucking song. Now for the person that he is, he did write a few good hits still. He definitely deserves to get his grave pissed on as often as he can, but you know, that's what the fans like to do. So it's not even insulting, it's actually praising him. Second one is actually a more recent one because it's one that I heard recently, which is uh, Raquan, obviously Wu-Tang Clan fame. For those of you who are too Caucasian to know what that is, that is um, a East Coast, New York based group of about like 30 people, maybe 50. That's, there's no confirmed number of how many members, but about six of them actually rapped. And Raquan was one of them. I heard this song on Supreme's Cherry. I think it was to Jason Dill's part, close to the end. And the song is Glaciers of Ice. And I really got hooked on this song because Raquan just had this introduction where he was just talking about Clarks. And now we had this new way of wearing Clarks this summer, which is basically just having cream Clarks with like blue dyed on top. Because he was supposed to say it's like, it's going to look like marble cake or some shit. Obviously, you can tell in the recording he was just way off it from something because <laughs> if anyone knows, Clarks do not blend well like marble cake, no matter how much dye you put on it. Also, straight out, shout out to Tony Stark's Ghostface Killer, or their, as they put it here, Ghostface Killer, but, you know, it's supposed to be spelled K-I-L-L-A-H because he's a killer. He's an ice-cold killer. Let me introduce this. Johnny Thunders and the Heartbreaks. Lame-ass motherfucker. The first time I heard the track that was on here that I'm going to talk about in a minute was because I stole it from one of those, like, sort of CDs they put in Krang where it's like, oh, 15 greatest or 10 greatest punk songs ever. And I was like, well, I'm not paying for the magazine because I don't really care. Uh, the skater known as Jim Greco, actually huge fan of Johnny Thunders. He basically styles himself after these guys. You can definitely tell if you look at it. And the track in this one that I love was Born to Lose because fuck was I born to lose. I'm just so good at losing. It's so good, you know? <laughs> Went through like about three years of not knowing who sang it because I'm really good at like not actually checking who wrote songs. I don't care who these people are. They're just vessels that make things I like to listen to. When it comes to Johnny Thunder and the Heartbreakers, I definitely care about them. I should probably actually listen to the other songs in this album because I've only been listening to Born to Lose for like five years now and don't even know any of these. Baby Talk, that sounds terrible, but it's probably good. Chinese Rock, sounds a little racist. Uh, Pirate Love, that just sounds cheesy. One Track Mine, Ugh. Actually, this all looks really terrible. Thank you. Take something else. Yeah, probably, yeah. Let me just check, take a look at the hip-hop section real quick. I'll be right back. Okay. Doug Eat Fresh, no, that's terrible. Don't listen to Doug Eat Fresh. All right, here's the one for all those who actually can't give a shit about decent-ass hip-hop. But this is a group you need to check out. This is my fourth option of the one I would buy if I had money. And it is a Gangstar full clip. There you go. Get a nice shot of that. This is a rap group that was active between 89 and 99. And I think pretty much every song they ever released was a success because it was just great. This was also on the same one as which one? Gigi Allen's one. But this part was Ryan Gee. He had the opening part in uh, Chomp on This and he did it to full clip. But that's just a great song. If you like hip hop or even if you don't and you just like poetry, you should just check these guys out. Actually, you know, cut out those other records. Just throw those away. Anything from Gangstar. Absolutely anything. But look at this. Peter Cushing. No White Peaks. Now, Peter Cushing did actually record a metal album when he was in his 80s. But this is a, it's rave with Peter Cushing. Could we listen to this? Peter, what have you got for us? Imagine if it was in French. Mountainside, for there is no snow left. 
I'd buy it for two pounds. He's just trying to get employee of the month, basically, that's all. 